Okay, welcome to 9.3. Today we're going to study the law of signs. And our objective will be to use the law of signs to find unknown parts of a triangle. Basically, the law of signs gives us the tools to take many triangles that are not right triangles and solve them. Meaning we have given enough information we can find the length of all three sides and all three angles. So, um, to develop the law of sines, we use the area of a triangle. And you guys always think of the area of a triangle as area equals base times height divided by 2. But you remember in pre-algebra when your teacher gave you a triangle and you had to find the height before you could find the area because the height was not given? All right. Well... I remember that too. And then I learned trigonometry and I found another formula for area of a triangle as long as I had side side angle. And it looks like this. K for area equals one half AB sine of C. And that has to equal one half BC sine of A. And that has to equal one half AC sine of B. All right, so I know that looks a little bit more complicated, but if you see it in action, it's really quite simple. So let's draw a non-right triangle. So area of a given of a triangle given side, angle, side. Okay, here we go. So this is your typical triangle right here. All right, and what I need is a side. So let's call that four centimeters. And then another side, I could call that seven cent centimeters. And then I need what's called the included angle right there. So what's this angle? We're gonna call that angle 73 degrees. So you guys understand that this is side, angle, side. It's the order in which we, say, we see the given information. And when I have this situation, do you notice I don't have the height here. By the way, I could find this height with right triangle trigonometry, and, but this will make me much more efficient. So I'm going to go K equals, and I start with my 1 half. And typically when my triangle is not labeled with my vertices A, B, and C, and my sides A, B, and C, I just picture this first formula right here. So A would be one of the sides given, so in this case we could call it four. Oh, I'm going general right here. So one half A, B, and then sine of the included angle C. So A and B are adjacent to the included angle. Okay, now let's go to work here. So this is what I was trying to do a second ago. So my A and B are interchangeable. So I usually, I don't know, I could start with my A as a four, my B as a seven, and then sine of the included angle, 73 degrees. All right, equals. And now I just punch that out on my calculator. And remember, we're in degree mode throughout most of this chapter right here, okay? And I think at the end of 9.1, didn't they tell us they wanted us to round all angle measures to the nearest tenth of a degree? So let's go to our calculator and let's make sure first we're in degree mode. Uh, my calculator is trying to graph something really uh, complicated here. So there we go. Okay, so mode, and I'm in radians right now, so I'm going to change that to degrees. Okay, and I'm just going to punch that out the way I see it. Oh, well, how about I go 1 half of 4 is 2 and go 2 times 7 is 14. Could I go 14 sine of 73 degrees? All right, and if you want to punch it out, 1 half 4 times 7, feel free. Anyway, to the nearest tenth of a degree, I'm getting 13.4. So 13.4 is the area of this triangle. And because I have units of centimeters, that area then would be square centimeters. Don't ever forget your units here. Okay, awesome. So this is how we use this formula for area of a triangle if we are given side angle side. Now, law of sines. 
What mathematicians did a long, long time ago is they used this formula to, for area of a triangle to come up with the law of sines. And you see a lot of common factors in all three of these little one half AB sine of C, one half BC sine of A, and one half AC sine of B. So guess what we're going to do? We're just going to do a little bit of division right here. So we're going to go law of sines is and we're going to take each of these expressions in these equations and divide by one half a b sine of c, or excuse me, one half a b c. And let's just start canceling. So the one halves cancel, the a's cancel, the b's cancel, and look at what I'm left with: sine of angle c over side c, right here. One halves cancel, the b's cancel. The C's cancel, and look at what we have left here. Sine of angle A over side A. And then over here, the one-halves cancel, the A's cancel, the C's cancel, and here I have sine of angle B over B. Guess what? We have just developed the law of sines. So in triangle ABC, and this is usually written in this order, sine of angle A over side A has to equal sine of angle B over side B, and those both have to equal sine of angle C over side C. And this works when we have angle, angle, side, two angles there, angle, side, angle, two angles right there, and then we have the third one, which is the side, side, angle. And side, side angle, highlight that because you have to do some double checking whenever you have side, side angle. All right, so here we go. Law of sines. So first, let's think about a typical diagram of a triangle. Now, notice how any triangle, we consider the vertices here, A, B, and C, and then notice the side opposite vertex A is side A. The side opposite vertex B is side B. And the side opposite vertex C is side C. So this is the notation for a triangle right there. And if they give us en enough information, we can solve it. So not a right triangle. Now you guys are experts at right triangle trigonometry, but frankly, most triangles are not right triangles, so we've got to have the trigonometry here. So the law of sines comes in, and the law of sines, if they give me an angle, an angle, and then side in that order, like angle C, angle A, and side C, that would work, all right? Or they give me angle, side, angle, like how about angle C, side B, and angle A, great and if they give me side side angle I'm gonna to have to do a little extra work here but that would be equivalent of something like side A side B and then angle A if they give me those if we know two angles and a side of a triangle then we can use the law of sines to solve the triangle or if they give you a side side angle you can use that too but it takes just a little extra work all right, so here's your typical problem right here. Find A and B. So that's just saying, what is the length of side A right there? And what is the length of side B right there? Now, without the law of sines, we could not do this. So let's break out our law of sines again in triangle ABC. Sine of angle A over side A has to equal sine of angle B over side B. And that has to equal sine of angle C over side C. Okay, so by the way, we're looking for side lengths right here, and notice how the side lengths are in my divisors. Well, if this equation is true, and I'm trying to find some side lengths, can I do this and just use reciprocals? Okay, so what's the reciprocal of sine of angle A over side A? That would be a over sine of angle A, and that has to equal B over sine of angle B, and that has to equal C over sine of angle C. So if I'm looking for side lengths 
I use my law of sines in this form. If I'm looking for angles, I use the above traditional form right there. So let's think about it. What are we looking for? Well, we probably start with, let's find the side A. So A over sine of angle A. So that would be sine of the angle opposite of side A. So that's sine of 110 degrees has to equal, and now you're looking for a side link where you have the opposite angle. So do you see this 25 right here? Do you agree that the opposite angle to the side of link 25 is 50 degrees? So wouldn't 25 have to equal sine of that 50 degrees? And right here what we're using is that C over sine of C right there. And now you have a trig equation and we can solve for side A. So and all we have to do is one step right here. Let's multiply both sides by sine of 110 degrees. So A equals 25 times sine of 110 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees. And then we get out our calculator again and punch that out. So let's see, degree mode, 25, sine of 110 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees. And I always double check, 25 sine of 110 divided by sine of 50, that looks good to me. And didn't they say that we want a distances to, was it three sig digs? I believe so, so I'll bet you. I wrote 30.7. Yeah, 30.7, three sig digs right there. Okay, and this is a length right there. Do I have any units? Oh yeah, meters. So that would be 30.7 meters. Nice, and there's side A. Now let's find the length of side B right here. So we're gonna start the same way. We're gonna go B over and now what do i know let's see well what angle is opposite of b well that would be that 20 degree angle right there so can't i go b over sine of b which is b over sine of 20 degrees has to equal and let's always don't go to what you solved use what was given. So I'm going to use the 25 over sine of 50 degrees. Okay, I always use my given information just in case I made a little mistake right here. Even something as simple as rounding error. And by the way, didn't we round this anyway? So if we used it, we'd be introducing error over here. So use the given information because right now everything's exact. And to solve for B, we're going to multiply both sides by sine of 20 degrees. So B equals 25 times sine of 20 degrees over sine of 50 degrees. And that's approximately, so let's punch this one out, 25 sine of 20 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees. Okay, and I double check because my calculator is old and keys stick. 25 sine of 20 degrees divided by sine of 50 degrees. That looks good. And the three sig digs, that would be 11.2. And 11.2, we're still in meters. And there you go. And now we know all six parts of this triangle. That would be a solved triangle right there. We have solved the triangle. And one of the biggest placements exam questions you'll see if you're going to like the University of Portland and they want to see, are you ready for calculus? Can you solve a triangle? Okay, so get really good at this. Law of sines, law of cosines, and for your right triangles, you have Sokotoa. Okay, ooh, now here's the situation. Note the diagram too. Okay, so let's just start putting the given information into this diagram. And any time I have a triangle where they have given me side side angle, which you're going to see in the moment, in a moment, I'm going to draw my triangle like this because I do not know if this side A right here is going to be long enough to intersect this segment on the bottom down there. 
Okay, so let's just put in our information. The measure of angle A is 30 degrees. Cool. And side B is 10, and that would have to be opposite this angle B, if that angle B exists. So I'm going to put a 10 right here. And then side A is 4, so that would be the side opposite of angle A, so the 4 is going to go right here. All right, so what do we have? We have side, side, angle. So we can use law of sines, but we've got to be careful. Yeah, there's my drawing. See how the 4, and then we don't know angle C, but we have the 10, and then that angle of 30 degrees, that's called side, side, angle right there. And when I get side, side, angle, a little frown because I've got to do some double checking. And just think about this. Now, I know the way I've drawn it, it looks like this 4. Think about that 4 being the C is a hinge right there, all right? And we've got this going on right here. And this, by the way, is called the hinge theorem. When you get into some advanced mathematics at the college right there. But is the four long enough for this segment or side A to intersect this ray down here? Okay. Well, let's find out with the law of signs. So law of signs. And again, let's get this memorized in triangle ABC, sine of A over A equals sine of b over b and that has to equal sine of c over c all right so let's see we are trying to find angle b right here so i'm going to go sine of b over and what's opposite that angle b if it exists the 10 and that has to equal now we know angle a so let's go sine of angle a or sine of 30 degrees over and what's opposite angle a the four all right so let's try to solve this for angle b so first step would be let's multiply both sides by 10. so sine of b would equal 10 times sine of 30 degrees divided by four all right so sine of b equals it looks like we can get an exact answer here and let's see if we can do this without our calculator right now isn't sine of 30 degrees one half divided by four would be one eighth. 10 times one eighth would be 10 eighths or five over four. Hey, look at that, 1.25, but mom, no calculator was necessary there. Now, anyway, sine of B equals 1.25. Now you all know that the function sine, if you graph it, it's gonna oscillate between negative one and positive one. This sine of B can never get up to a 1.25 right there. So that tells me in this situation, we have no solution. This four is just gonna be too short. So I'm picturing it a little shorter than the diagram. And with the hinge theorem, it's just gonna go back and forth, but it could never hit this ray at the bottom to make the base of that triangle. All right, let's keep going. Now, they're changing up some parameters a little bit. The measure of angle A is still 30 degrees, and side B is still 10 units, and side A is now 5 units. So the question is, is 5 going to be long enough? Well, let's find the measure of angle B, if it exists. So again, law of signs, because we have side, side angle right there. <laughs> which we got to be careful all right so again we're trying to find angle b so let's start with a sine of b over and what is opposite the angle b if it exists the 10 and that equals now let's use what we know which would be sine of angle a or sine of 30 degrees over side a which is a five and now let's solve this one for the B. So multiply both sides by 10 to get sine of B equals 10 times sine of 30 over five. And we can probably do this one without a calculator too because 10 divided by five is two and the sine of 30 is one half. Isn't it two times one half gonna give me a one? Ha <laughs> look at that. So sine of B equals one. Well, doesn't sine have an output of one at 90 degrees 
that tells me the measure of angle B has to equal 90 degrees. So let's kind of redo this diagram a little bit. Here's what's going on right here. Okay, so here's my 90 degree angle right there, and that means that this height right here is a five right there. So there we go. Now, let's do one more, because remember the first one we had no solution. The second situation we had one solution and our angle was a 90 degree angle. Now think of it if this uh, side A is longer than five, do you think I might get like two solutions, one acute angle and one obtuse angle? Let's think about that. All right, so here we have it. If the measure of angle A equals 30 degrees, that sounds familiar and side B is still 10, but now side A is a six, so this is now a six. All right, well, if a four was too short and a five gave me a 90 degree angle, you can bet this six is going to give me two possible angles for angle B. So let's find it with, again, what do we have? Side, side angle, law of sines. So sine of that angle B that we're trying to find over the side opposite angle B, which would be a 10, equals, all right, now what do we know? Oh, sine of A or sine of 30 degrees over the six. There we go. Now let's solve this one for B. So that implies sine of B equals, all right, 10 times sine of 30 over six. All right, now let's think about this. See if we can do this without our calculator. Sine of 30 is one half. So 10 times one half would be five. That's five over six. <laughs> Look, mom, no calculator. And you could punch that out. You'd get an ugly decimal there that you could convert, but that's exact. All right, so if sine of B equals five over six, ooh, that's not one of my key outputs on the unit circle. How are we gonna find B? Well, we'll take inverse sine of both sides. So we're gonna go, the measure of angle B is approximately, and it would be the inverse sine of this five over six. And we're already in degree mode, so let's just punch that out. Second sine for inverse sine of five divided by six, <gasps> And that is going to be, and then let me see, this is an angle, so we need this to the nearest tenth. I'm getting 56.4 degrees. All right. Now, Leilani would say, we need to break out the unit circle to find our obtuse angle. So here's my unit circle, and here's my rough approximation of 56.4 degrees right there. And then in what other quadrant is sine positive? That would be quadrant two. So let's reflect this ray in the y-axis to get that ray right there. And what's the measure of this angle? It's obtuse, all right, but how am I gonna get it? Could I go 360 degrees minus 56.4? Or excuse me, did I say 360? That's 180. 180 degrees minus 56.4? Well, let's punch that out. 180 degrees minus 56.4 and I've got 123.6 so there you go so what's going on here is if this were connected the uh, acute angle A would be 56.4 degrees but if we swing the other way with that hinge at uh, vertice C right there we get this and then this angle right here would be 123.6 degrees and both of those angles work with these given parameters okay now, now here's that's a typical test question right here and here's another one right here determine whether angle T exists if so oops sorry about that if so find all possible measures of angle T so this angle T right here, okay, well, looks to me like it'd have to be an acute angle if it exists, okay? So what are we gonna do? Cause you know, isn't our typical triangle A, B, and C, you know? And now they give us an RST, all right? Well, if we don't label the vertices of every triangle A, B, and C. So you've gotta know how to handle this, all right? 
So by the way, what have they given us here? Oh my, side, side, and angle. So we gotta be careful here. So we're trying to find angle T, so let's start with our sine of T over, and isn't the seven opposite that angle T? Seven equals, now the angle we know, let's go sine of 126 degrees over and the side opposite that 126 degree angle would be the 12. Now let's solve this for the t. So first thing I would do is multiply both sides by 7 to get sine of t equals 7 sine of 126 degrees over 12. All right, huh. this one it's not sine of 30 anymore so we're going to be approximating on a calculator. So the measure of angle t equals, now you guys, Aren't we just going to go inverse sine of the right-hand side right here? Okay. So now, again, you could punch this out first, but, you know, I think I'm just going to punch it out. I'm going to go clear. Let me clear my screen. I'm going to bring that inverse sine over. So I'm going to go second sine for the inverse sine. And then of what? Well, I'm going to put exactly this in my parentheses. So I'm going to go 7 sine of 126 degrees, close that angle, and let's divide by 12, and then close my grouping for the inverse sine, and double check and make sure this is incorrectly. So inverse sine of 7 sine of 126 divided by 12. Boy, that looks good to me. And I am getting, and this is an angle, so let's round to the nearest tenth, I'm getting 28.2 degrees. Okay, so that looks reasonable, 28.2 degrees. All right, but then Leilani would say, you better break out that unit circle. So let's approximate 28.2 degrees. Now, again, we're talking sine, and sine is still also positive in quadrant two. So let's reflect this ray in the y-axis to get that ray. And now wouldn't that be Let's not go 360 again. Let's go 180 minus 28.2. So 180 minus 28.2. Hope you're punching this out with me. And I'm getting this angle right here, that quadrant two angle, 151.8. Now notice I put that in black. Can you guys tell me why? What I'm saying right here is 28.2 degrees is my only possible solution. And all I do is my second angle, my obtuse angle. Well, look at the other obtuse angle in this triangle, 126 degrees. Can I have an angle of 126 degrees and 151.8 degrees in the same triangle? Well, you guys know the three angles have to add up to 180 by the triangle sum theorem, so that would not be possible. So, in any triangle, the sum of two angles cannot be greater than or equal to 180 degrees. And 151.8 plus 126 is a whole lot bigger than 180. So my only answer is the acute angle, 28.2 degrees. Isn't that cool? All right, now I'd like you guys to do page 347, 2, 7, 11, 13, 21, and 22. And I will post the even answers, the 2 and the 22 in Google Classroom. And you have the answers to the odds in the back of your book. You guys have a great day and let me know if you need anything.